Hello and welcome back to Cutleaf. Now I've wanted to make this video for quite a while but as usual I just haven't got around to it. And I've seen quite a lot of these videos, you know, people saying how to make money with your drone but some of these people haven't gone through that process themselves. And I think in order to give advice you need to be able to have gone through that process, got the experience, learned from your failures and success and then you can pass on the advice to others. So without any further ado, Today I'm going to be talking to you about my five top ways on how to make money with your drone through stuff that I've done and specifically talking about the DJI Mini 2. So let's start with tip number one and if you've seen my previous videos you're going to know quite a bit about this and that is prints. Yes, selling photo prints and when I say prints I mean like a a wide variety here, we could be talking about canvases, dye bonds, different materials, finishes, etc. Um, but prints is just like uh, a, a wide umbrella for everything else. But most people specifically buy a lot of prints from me. So if you own a drone or if you've owned a drone for quite a while now, the likeliness is that you've got a library of photos of your local area or any sort of like attractions and stuff like that. And they're just sitting there doing nothing when they could be earning you a nice bit of cash. So since selling prints at the start of June 2020, I've made a grand total of £8,072, plus some sales through Facebook, like through some direct messages and stuff, it takes it to a grand total of £9,500, which isn't bad considering I've only been using the DJI Mini first um, model and also the DJI Mini 2. Now of course that £9,500 isn't all profit. I've had to buy the prints, uh, dispatch the prints and Etsy take some fees and stuff as well. But if you want to see a broken down video of the costs and the profit at the end then I'd be happy to do something like that. Um, just comment below if you think that'd be useful to you. So the two platforms I use to sell my prints and promote myself online is Etsy and my own website. But the only thing is like 95% of my sales come through Etsy so the website isn't pointless because I've still made it like you know a bit of money through it but with Etsy it's just so easy to use the user interface is really friendly and it's just so simple to upload products and I think a lot of people know Etsy and they trust Etsy and they've also got like an Etsy account and I think it's just like a huge platform nowadays that people shop on so if you can establish yourself and get some good sales through there, also get some reviews and stuff, then um, I'd say the go-to is Etsy. So the company that I use to print my prints, and I found these when I first started in June 2020, I sort of like trialed a few different companies, but the best result that I was getting were from a company called Loxley Color, and they're based in Glasgow, they're a huge print company, and their end product, and like no word of a lie, is incredible. I'll just quickly show you an A1 print now actually, bear with. That's an A1 of Torquay Bridge. Um, yeah, it, it, honestly, the quality is incredible. And the colours are like, replicate the ones from my MacBook. There's nothing off about this. And yeah, so this is what's going to be going up on the wall behind me. But yeah, as you can see, the quality is amazing. And again, that's come from the DJI Mini 2 with 12 megapixels. It's insane. So yeah, they're the company I use, but also they offer a wide variety of different products, so like canvases, um, calendars, you know, just like a ton of stuff. Just go on their website, check it out. It looks really good, I'll link it below. They do like a free example pack, so you can like upload some of your photos to their website and get it sent to you for free. Check them out, you can't go wrong. Yeah, so yeah, to summarize the first part of prints, um, Etsy, your own website, but I prefer Etsy, and also Loxley Color, as your supplier, just try them out. Okay, so it's great setting up your Etsy store and uploading some photos or your own website, but that's not gonna help you drive sales. You need to be actively thinking about your marketing and how you're gonna promote your product. Because the way I see it is you can be the best photographer in the world. You know, your photos look incredible, you upload them to Etsy, you let them just sit there and you think people are gonna go wow and just buy your product. Or you could have someone sort of like an amateur photographer but they've built their social presence on Facebook and they've got a Facebook page, they've got like 5,000 likes. They upload their products to the Etsy store then share the link with you know 5,000 people to follow them. Who's gonna make more sales? So just because you've got some great photos doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna drive your sales for you. You need to actively be like on it with your marketing, always promoting your products. So just briefly going over some marketing tips. Uh, obviously the first one being Facebook and Instagram. So have a Facebook page and have an Instagram account. Upload your photography onto those platforms. 
Then you need to be thinking about your target market. So, so are you a drone photographer that's based in a lovely tourist location and you know, you've got loads of location-based photos? Are there Facebook groups online that you can share those photos on? Directing people to your own Facebook page? Is your photography quite urban? Is it moody? Is it quite, you know, um, like contemporary, what audience is that gonna reach? Then you need to be looking for those people on Facebook or those Facebook groups and sharing your photography. So you need to be thinking about who would want to buy your imagery. So yeah, that's that's what I would say. Facebook, Instagram, know your target audience and uh, then that will help you then drive those sales. And remember, it takes time. You're not gonna be a success overnight. You're gonna have a small audience. The more shares you get, the more likes you're gonna get. And you, you know how it works. If you haven't already started, make a start and just take your time. So yeah, that's Prince, that's tip number one, on to tip number two. So tip number two is all about calendars. So as we're in December, it's a little bit late to be thinking about doing calendars now, considering it's, I don't know, since I uploaded this video towards the end of December. Um, it's something to be thinking about throughout the year coming up. So if you have owned your drone for a little while now and you've got some photos again of a location based place, then the likeliness is you're gonna have a lot of photos that you can put into a calendar. You only need 12 photos. And believe me when I tell you, people go mad for calendars. I don't know why, but they just do. You know, especially around Christmas time for gifts, it's such a like simple gift to get someone, uh, especially if they're not from here, or if they're missing home or if they've moved away. Calendars are always gonna sell, man. Since September this year, I made 4,350 pound selling calendars. Now, I've already done the hard work throughout the year. I've been out, I've taken my photos, I've edited them. Come September, it's really simple. I've got a template, upload my photos, put a little um, Brixham 2022 from above, upload it, put it on Etsy, promote it on Facebook, bam, sales. People are gonna go, oh, he's got his calendars are out and then they're just gonna start perching, well, they, they should start perching away. That's what you'd hope anyway, if you've got that sort of audience. But yeah, so I've made 4,350 pound from September, and that's just passive income. So that's just literally money coming through the account from something that you've been doing as a hobby throughout the year. So definitely something to look into um, and something to work towards towards the end of 2022. So with the calendars, you need to have a theme in mind. So for me, again, it's location-based because I live in a tourist destination. So I had two calendars this year. I had a tour bay from above 2022 and Brixham from above 2022. I think if you want to go big, like UK from above, I think you've got a lot of competition. Yeah, your target will be wider and be bigger, but then you've got a lot of competition to battle up against. And if you're not like an established photographer, it's gonna be very difficult to sort of make those sales because there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are already like a, a big name that people are gonna to go to because they've been doing it for years. So sometimes just because you've got a bigger audience doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna make more sales. So think small and then you can really, you know, target the right audience for yourself and then you haven't got to try to reach as many people. And then the likeliness is that you'll probably make more sales. So yeah, calendars, get thinking, go out there and do it. Okay, so tip number three, and it's quite a short one, but it's a good one, and it's selling your stock photography of the area as digital files. Now this tip can cover a wide range of businesses from real estate to Airbnb to corporate to small local businesses. Anyone or any sort of business that has a website or promotes their products or their services on billboards or leaflets, flyers, you name it. So for example, if you go onto Google and go onto maps and you type in real estate businesses near me, you should get a list of real estate businesses around your local area click on their website and then have a look at their imagery. See what it's like, have they got any pictures of the local area? Have they got any pictures of some like attractions that you've got? So if their imagery looks like it needs updating or if you just wanna say friendly hello anyway, just take their details, pop them an email saying, hi, my name's blah, blah, I'm a local photographer, I do a lot of drone photography, uh, check out my portfolio, send them to your Instagram and your Facebook, say my photography is available as digital files for sale. Um, if you'd ever be interested, then just, let me know and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Now selling your imagery as digital files is a little bit complicated and risky if you're not going about it correctly. So obviously as a digital file, you're sending your high res file to a company um, to use for their website. 
you need to be specific with the company for what they can use the imagery for. So make sure you have some terms and conditions. Make sure you've got a list of what they can use it for. So if they're using a photo for their website, that photo might cost £45 for that digital file. If they want to use the photo for their website, a brochure or a bus dot billboard, you can be looking at, I don't know, £150 for just that digital file. You have to state that they can't print it for personal use or that, um, or for financial gain. But yeah, make sure you cover your back with digital files because the last thing you'd want someone to do is uh, stab you in the back. But yeah, like I said, I'm only giving advice from stuff that I've done. So I've got a few companies around here, especially Airbnbs um, and real estate companies that have bought my imagery of the local area to put on their website and stuff. And also, who knows what else it could lead to if you send them to your portfolio on Instagram and Facebook. It could also lead to some really good commissioned work as well. So they might want you to go out and photograph one of their properties. So with commissioned photos, they got to pay you for your time going out, your time editing and purchasing the file. So there can be more money made. So yeah, tip number three is all about selling your stock photography as digital files. Okay, so tip number four, very similar to tip number three, and that's selling your stock videography. Now I know a lot of people usually upload their stock videography to websites such as Shutterstock, Pond5, Video Hive and stuff like that. But remember what I said previously about having a smaller target market can help drive more sales. Uploading your videos, which I'm not saying it's a write-off, but uploading your videos to those websites, you're uploading your stock videography with a million other people so yeah, if you do have a smaller target market with your stock videography, again, I think you'll drive more sales and it also help boost your name. So if you've got a day or two off work and you've got nothing to do and it's predicted to be a beautiful day with a beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sunset and there's some cool stuff going on, there's like a boat race or there's like a, you know, race in town, I don't, whatever, then you need to get your drone, get your batteries, charge them up, put them in and get out there and film. What do you have in your local area? Do you have lots of hotels, big landscapes, amazing waterfalls, big attractions? You know, what, like you need to really sit down and think what attracts in my local area or what's going on and what would look good on drone. So whatever it is, sit down, plan your shoot, go out, shoot what you need to shoot, then upload it all to a external hard drive and then save it as archive footage, have folders, you know, make it really organized. So once you've collated all that footage from that day or two, you then need to just sort of sit down and go, right, who would be interested in this footage? Who could I sell this to? Then sit down, do a little bit of research, find the company, send them an email. My name is blah, blah, blah. I went out the other morning. There was a cracking sunrise. I decided to film your hotel. This footage is available for purchase if you wanted to use it as um, for your website or anything. Or just say to them, you know, I think this will look great for your socials or your marketing. Um, I'm also a videographer. I can edit this into like an Insta Reel or like for your LinkedIn or anything. So don't waste your days just doing nothing and also don't throw away your archive footage. Save it into an external hard drive. It's not expensive for like a one terabyte. Organize your footage and then reach out to companies that you think may be interested in purchasing. So I actually had this not long ago. I was out filming where my office space is called Brixham Laboratory and it's this place where there's loads of offices and big businesses. And I was doing some marketing for the lab and I was out filming on a sunny day and I was just filming around the area. And uh, I uploaded the footage to LinkedIn, you know, just tagging the, uh, the company and stuff. And then another company within the building and they're quite a large company, they ended up seeing that footage and then I got a phone call from them asking to buy it. Now, with stock videography, you can charge a really good amount. Just know your business that's buying the uh, footage don't charge ridiculous but you can charge premium so i ended up selling the footage to them i put a little clip together edited it spliced it really neatly sent it to them they liked it so much i've now been pulled in to do another video which i've done which went fantastic and now next year i'm going to be doing a lot of video projects with them so just going out and shooting some stuff and uploading it to you know linkedin or sending it to those companies can lead to a lot more work so just think when you're out at that time, it's not for nothing, it's for a reason and it can lead to more. Just put in the effort of doing it and then hopefully something will come back. So that's tip number four, stock videography. And last but not least, tip number five. So if you're serious about it and you want to go self-employed or you want to run your own business in drone work, this is the tip for you. So you could work in 
anything or specialize in anything. You can do wedding videography, you can do construction work, surveillance, you can do inspections. There's a wide variety of droning out there and you can have your own business specifically in drones. I've got a friend, Drone Man, Will, he does it. He gets loads of work in FPV um, and the opportunity is there and it's about putting the work in. So for me, I run a production company, so I could fall under pretty much any of these categories. Um, so I haven't got like a, a niche. I'm doing a lot of like construction work, then I'm doing, you know, landscape work or real estate work. And yeah, so for me, I'm not like specific. But yeah, if you want to start specializing in something, then start practicing. So what you need to do is build a portfolio, practice, practice, practice. And before you know it, it will become your full time job. The more work you put in, the more you'll be rewarded. So that's tip number five, short and sweet. Um, so what we had, let's recap, we've had prints, calendars, stock photography as digital files, stock videography, and running your own business um, in a certain area like construction or something like that. So I think it's important to remember that just by following these tip, it doesn't guarantee you success. It's down to the individual to make something of themselves. You could be the most talented videographer, photographer out there, but if you don't market yourself correctly, then your work will never be seen. Try, fail, try again, but if you commit and you just work hard at it, you're pretty much guaranteed success. And that's it from me in this video. I hope you can take something away from it. If you have any questions, please pop them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I also run a Facebook group called Cutley of Creatives that you can find, which I'll just um, put around here. And basically that is a group where loads of people have their own business or sell prints. It's a safe space where we help each other, where if you have any questions, just put it on the group and people will help you out. And it's also a place for sharing your success stories as well. If you've made your first sale, if you've made 500 sales, it's a place for sharing and it's a place for helping. And last but not least, remember to give the video a big thumbs up. Hit that sub button because there are a lot more videos to come in 2022. I promise the YouTube space is coming along. We're going to get some nice pictures up. We're going to get the lighting right and everything like that. It's all trial and error at the end of the day. And, uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. See you then.